Hi everyone, um, or to anyone who happens to stumble upon uh, this video. Um, my name is Alan McClement and for the last couple of years um, I've been working in the customer service industry, most recently for uh, the DWP um, on the Universal Credit Helpline, if, if that's what you can call it. Um, I handed in my notice and worked up to the 31st of October of last year um, because I believe that this needs to be exposed. Um, the processes behind it are to not to put too fine a point on it, inhumane. Um, and I would love to meet the people that, that draw up these policies and ask them what their thinking is behind it. Um, because people are going hungry in this country. I, I know that for a fact. Um, now, when I was working for Universal Credit, you would normally take about anything between 70 and 80 calls a day. It would usually average about 65, 70. Um, and the vast majority of those of those calls are people not getting their payments. Now, there is some people that don't get their payments for a good reason. They've maybe not filled in um, or, or ticked off a to, an assignment on their to-do list. They may um, have missed an appointment or something along those lines, and that that's fine because you can give them the reason to say, well, you, you've 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 missed your appointment, so that that's why your your payments uh, uh, not not available. Unfortunately, more and more people were calling through because their payments weren't there without a good enough reason and you would go through their account and you would look and everything would be ticked off they would attended all their appointments etc etc and then you would look and their payment like their statement wouldn't be generated and i i used to say i'm really sorry i mean <laughs> there's no good reason as to why your payment is not available today now the the, the process is that you're taught to do is is that I'm supposed to advise that claimant that she or he or whatever um, to leave a journal message for their case manager to then put a payment dispute through. Now, that, that's fine if they respond pretty quickly, which they do in some parts of the country, but there's a lot of parts of the country where they don't. I mean, I think the longest I'd seen or the timeline that I'd, the longest timeline that I'd seen that someone had to wait for a response was around eight weeks. Now, in this, uh, in due to the precarious state of the world, no one can wait eight weeks for their payment. I mean, they're, 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 the allowances a lot of people get is not enough to live on anyway. But when you completely delete that from them, and then you need to say to them, "Well, it's it's I, I can't do anything because I can't dispense a payment to them." Um, and then it obviously starts, and you can understand why people get frustrated with that. I mean, I got frustrated with it, and many agents and my colleagues got frustrated with it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad agents, um, as there is work coaches and case managers, and that is a lot, there's a big reasons to why I'm doing this video, and it's to raise awareness, or these videos, because it's probably going to go over three or four, um, it's to raise awareness so that we can and get a, to, to let people know, the taxpayer, more first and foremost this is how your money is being used and um, it's being used as a weapon against the very people it's supposed to help that's that's not right i mean we're in britain in 2023 and the dwp think that that money's theirs it belongs to them now there's always money for agendas if it's something that they want there's unlimited resources for that if it's something that people need, there's not enough resources because everything, all the other resources has been spread amongst their agenda, not ours. Um, and the best example of that is, is just a few weeks ago, it was announced that there was a budget of 17 billion for a fighter jet, a new fighter jet. So we've got a budget of 17 billion for a new fighter jet. And yet when someone doesn't get a payment through no fault of their own, we can't then give them a crisis loan because they've done away with crisis loans a couple of years ago. Um, again, all in, it was all in anticipation because they knew this was coming. They knew this migration was coming from all the other benefits to universal credit. Now, th this is all what's in the, the Agenda 21 document. If you haven't heard the Agenda 21, I suggest you look at it, or Agenda 2030, it's sometimes known because it has been agreed in all our names. Um, the amount of people I've asked that and they've never heard it, it's staggering. So I suggest you get 
get in the know f with what they're planning because once you read that document and you see how the world's gone because we've got the benefit of hindsight over the last three years then you'll see that the last three years of or the events of the last three years on this planet were absolutely no accident um, and this this benefit system connects into that because what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring in what's known as a dystopian society it's a society that's based on fear jealousy anger I mean, we're practically in it just now. There's a lot of that just now. But it's nowhere near where they want to take us. And this benefit system is absolutely central to it all because this is where the universal income is going to come through. This, is th this, this benefit system is more or less going to determine whether it's going to happen for them or not. And absolutely, it's not going to happen for them because we need to come together. Once we know that... I mean, how can you change the game if you don't know a game is being played? And that you're a pawn in that game. You can't. It's absolutely impossible. And the amount of people that have rejected it over the years. They no longer reject it now. Certainly in my life. Um, and the universal income was all, it was always planned for people to be moved on to this. And I, I mean I'd woken up to this stuff some 10 years ago now. And um, I've done a lot of reading on it. And a lot of what it said was going to come to fruition. Absolutely have. Um... And when I first started telling people that it was coming and there was like they wanted everyone on a universal income and smart cities, microchipped, all that, oh, everything that's happening, they did people did and rightly said, well, how are they going to get everyone on a universal income, one universal income? And at the time I thought that's a that's a really good question. How are they going? And I, it was a question that I didn't have an answer to. After working for them, I now know the answer to that question. As many people. Um, who have migrated, recently migrated onto Universal Credit, um, will be aware of why, of, of how it's being done. Now, it was by the end of 2023, everyone had to migrate across, so it didn't matter whether you were on tax credits, income support, working tax credit, shelter, it didn't matter. Um, they wanted you off that and onto, uni onto Universal Credit. Now, a lot of people had heard about the horrors of Universal Credit and asked the question, well, why do I need to do that? Because um, they wouldn't, no, no one wanted to. But what they did was they stopped paying housing benefit through things like income support and working tax and all the benefits I just mentioned. Um, so if you, so for all intents and purposes, if you're on if you're on one of those benefits and you need your rent paid, then you have you would have no choice but to move across to universal credit because universal credit's the only benefit that's going to pay your rent. So that's how they've got everyone to migrate across. And I, I would imagine it's all been done now because the vast majority of people do need their rent paid. And this is, how, this is how they do it, because they've got control. And because they think, or they've got us believing that we've got no power, it's all, it's all with them, then they've been allowed to continue with this, inge this agenda unchallenged. That is until people are reminded the power that they possess. Your power's immeasurable, um, as, as, as I've found out over the last few years. I mean, I was, I was, I was overweight. I was 21 stone at one point. Um, I'm now down to 12. And, and and I didn't think I could do any of those things, um, and it just it's just it's just a change of thinking to remember that you are you're, you're you're better than that, and you've got power to change your life. It's only you that's got the power to change your life. And I'm going to do other videos about how I've changed my health and my thinking and what I've achieved through that. But I'm going to stick to the contents of this, and once I get these videos out of the way, I'll move on to that later. Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Where was I? Yeah. Okay. So um. Like I was saying, it's it's all part of the plan um, to change society. Um, this is why COVID was kicked off in China, because China's the blueprint. If you don't know much about Chinese society, I suggest you go and look at it. I'll briefly explain um, their social credit system, which is basically... Right, OK, so they have credit scores um, for people that follow the government's way of doing things. So, for example... If I was in China and I maybe smoked cigarettes or drank, drank alcohol or gambled or done whatever that they deem undesirable, um, then you would get scores knocked off your social credit score. And what that means is, it basically means that if it drops low enough, you can't go into restaurants or cinemas or cafes or transport. You can't go here, you can't go there. Um, and that's what they want to bring here. But it actually gets worse than that. Now, even if you, like, let's say you are teetotal and you do everything that they say um, and you're, you've got your freedoms and you can do whatever you want, let's say you started speaking to someone who's got a low social credit score, 
they would then drop your social credit, social credit score. And if you'd done that enough, it would, it would go to the same level as the undesired person um, that's within the government. And that's only because you're speaking to them. So this, this is, I mean, it might seem extreme that, but this is actually going on in China. I mean, if you Google Ch Chinese control system, words to that effect, and look at some of the videos, it will absolutely blow your mind. Um, on what they're doing to children and to get them under control. It's just it's just absolute madness and they do want to bring that here. Um, and I'll say it again, this benefit system is going to be central to it. Now, one of the main reasons that I wanted to do this was because the payments, the, the, there's, there's fraud being committed here. There is definitely fraud being committed on the British taxpayer and claimants. Um, people are having their benefits stolen from them. Um, people that haven't got anything to steal and like I mentioned before, there's no crisis loans. So I'm going to start with the payments. I sat and kind of write, wrote a, a, a few bullet points uh, last night in, in, in anticipation for this. And um, I'll just take it from the top of the statement down. So I'll start with the standard allowance. The standard allowance is just, well, it's, it does exactly what it says in the tin. It's your standard allowance for your, um, your, your food, etc. Um, it's obviously different for under 25s. However, um, down below that, you'll have, or most, a lot of people, if you, if, like say you're a carer, if you're caring for someone, you'll have maybe carer's allowance on there or carer's element. I think it's carer's element first. Now, this, this is the benefit, this is the deduction that's causing a lot of problems for people. Um, if it's on there that you get carer's element, they automatically deduct £185 for pound from your standard allowance. Um, which is fine because if you're on carer's element, you're getting it from another department, so it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, they're adding this deduction onto people that's not on carer's element. Now, I spoke to one lady in particular. She was Scottish. This is how I can remember her. And she she basically told me that she was she, she used these words, as many people have. I'm hungry, Alan. I'm hungry. And I looked at her statement, and straight away I'd clocked what may be the problem and it was there was a carer's element deduction on I think there was something else on her statement as well for another deduction because I, I, I think I told her that it was about £4,000 she was relieved of over the over the time period and I'd looked at her I, I'd said look are you on carer's element she said I've not been on it for three years or so or more and I'd said well it's on here that you're still getting it and she'd called up many times she'd called up many many times to ask what was going on to see for some help but no one would give it to her. Not because they didn't know what was going on, but because they're told not to tell the claimant what's going on. Now, if someone's got carer's element on there, like I said, it'll deduct the money from you. But if you're not getting it, they're still deducting that money as this lady for three years plus wasn't getting that benefit for. And she was going hungry because of it. And because of the way the process is set up for us agents, it doesn't matter how many times she calls up. We are not allowed to tell her that that's what's going on. But I actually made a job out of it, of telling people, because I would want people to tell me. I was getting marked down all the time for it. That's why my compliance was zero. Everything else was 100%. Compassion, empathy, processes, blah, 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 call control, all of it, 100 green. Until it came to compliance, red and zero. And I'll be honest with you, I'd be ashamed if it was anything else. Um, because I took pride on not following their compliance because for me to follow their compliance, um, I would lose sleep over that because I would know that my actions would be causing even more hunger that's already been, been caused. Now, evil can only do its bidding if good people do nothing. So if we, if we do what they tell us to do, then yes, people will go hungry, but I didn't do that. I just, I went against it. Um, because I was so good at my job, they never ever got rid of me um, until I'd left uh, on one accord and they still wanted me to stay. But I was helping 70 people a day um, and it was good. I mean, some of the feedback I used to get was brilliant and it, it kept me going. But I, I, it became, this isn't enough. It's not enough. There's not enough people doing this. So uh, that's when I attained the decision to hand in my notice. Now I could have stayed there and just continued to do what I was doing and, and I would have felt pretty good about helping people, picking up my salary, etc, etc. But there does come a point where you have to do the right thing regardless of what the consequences are to yourself. Um, so I took that decision to do that. Um, I actually waited. I should have done this. I should have just done the video straight away. I really should have. But I had a lot of holidays to pick up, etc. And I wanted to wait till I got my money before I'd done any videos. Um, 
when I did get my money, I'd realised they'd done me out about seven or eight days of holiday money, which is quite a lot of money, especially running up to Christmas. Um, and they had claimed that that that, that it was that it was it was correct. It was only eight days I had, not fifteen. It was like yeah, whatever. Um, and I actually went through it with my manager, who, by the way, I hope he sees this as an absolute scumbag, and he is absolutely the people that they need to do that job. We sat and we'd gone over all my holidays because it was coming up to Christmas and you have to take them by then and it was 15 days. That was what he said to me. It's fine well he knows. And then he came back in the email to say it was only eight days. And he's like, no, you're a liar and a coward, mate. And I hope he sees this because that's exactly what he is. And again, he's the type of person that they need because um, he came from Serco. That's another story. Serco's a despicable organisation as well. Um, but this is why they need people like that and... I, 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 I mean, I was absolutely stunned that he even emailed me to, to try and say that. It just shows you how patronising he could be. Um, and he used micromanagement tools as well. I mean, that, like, like I say, that's the kind of people that they need. And he's telling me not to question things. And it, you're not here to question. And speaking down to you as if he's a bloody teacher and you're a child. And I just wasn't having it. Like, um, But anyway, I mean... Uh, it was, he was the reason that I'd, I actually got a disciplinary. I mean, you're not going to believe it. I, I got a disciplinary for giving, doing someone a homeless application for my kid from Afghanistan who had was the victim of an unprovoked attack. It was quite, it was really serious. And I felt sorry for him. He needed help. So I said to him, he was homeless. He said, look, have you got anywhere to go? And he said, no. And I said, well, there's some numbers here I can give you, but what I can do for you if you like, I can fill out the homeless application form and, and send it to this organisation and they'll help you. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. No one's helped me ever like that. And that, I, that I was constantly hearing that on, on, on the lines every day, multiple times a day because the agents, some of them are so bad. But anyway, I'd, I'd, I'd done it and next thing I know, I'm getting a disciplinary hearing for it. Um, I was disciplined, final written warning. It wasn't even just a slap on the wrist, it was a final written warning. It was basically to get me under control, and it was him that done it. Um, he basically ran to his managers and, oh, look what he's done. He's put my, he, all I did was put his email into the, or CC them into it, so that he could obviously read the email. And they penalised me for it, and it was just like, nah. And I, and I should have left there and then, I really should have, but I continued because I was good at it. Um, and. It just, I mean, I, I knew I was never going to, I would like to have done a couple of years, but it was just, it was just never going to be happening because their processes were getting worse and worse and worse. And it was just, it was just, it was, it was becoming too much. So um, we have to move on, especially people that use micromanagement tactics. If you, if you need to use micromanagement tactics, then you shouldn't be in a managerial role because it tells me that you've not got enough people skills to do it. So you would probably be better just being a follower. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, sorry, I've gone off a little bit there. Um, yeah, so, pay, so carer's element and carer's allowance. Now, carer's element, if you've got that on your statement and you're not receiving it, you need to get onto the phone. Don't leave a journal message. It's pointless. Get on the phone and demand a payment dispute. And you, the, what, I mean, they do give people the money back. But how are people supposed to get their money back if the pro policy is or the process is that the agent's not allowed to tell them what's going on? I don't see how that's possible. And in the meantime, where is the money going? I'd like to know where that money's going. I mean, for all we know, it could be a... A, a separate fraudulent group that's doing this without the knowledge of anyone and they're just getting away with it because we're not allowed to say anything. It's crazy. And then you've got carer's allowance. Now, carer's allowance is the one, that's for people who, um, they, I think you can only work 16 hours or less um, and collect carer's allowance. Now, if it's 16 hours or more you work, it's carer's element you get. Um, and there's, there's so many people who had were on carer's allowance and there was one lovely lady I'd spoke to and she, it was like for a whole year, she was getting £300 a month taken off her and she just thought that it was because of the cost of living. And she said, I just thought everyone was in the same boat. It's like, well, we are, but it doesn't need to be this difficult. Um, and then she couldn't believe it. She's like, why has no one told me about this? And that's because we're not allowed to. That's terrible. That's, and then there was another lady who asked me one day, why has no one told me? Why is no one protesting? It's like, well, I mean, anybody you do tell, they don't. Obviously, the claimant who re realises they've been relieved of all this money, they, they get a bit annoyed. But with regards to process, eh, protests, it's just it's, no one seems to be that bored about it. That's why um, I, I'm doing this video. And just while I'm on it, I mean, <laughs> I googled how to report the DWP for fraud. There's no way to report the DWP for fraud. There's plenty of links and plenty of information to report benefit cheats for fraud. That's fine. There's plenty of information on that. But there's no one that appears to be policing them. And this will be why they're doing it, because they've got, they get away with everything, because they know the vast majority of people 
don't bother doing their own research. Um, and I can tell you now, since I started doing it, it's been the best thing I've ever done because it keeps you informed, um, not by the news. It's, it's, it's your own information then. Um, so if you are on, if, if, if these kinds of things are on your statement and you're not receiving them, you need to get on the phone and put in these payment disputes and demand that the, the agent put it through. Don't say, I'm not leaving a journal message, it's pointless. I demand you put it through, it's your job. Um, and I mean, like I say, you'll get your money back. But there's nowhere near enough people getting their money back as much as what's being taken from people, and that's what needs to change. Um, because it is that's that this is causing. It's not just causing hunger. I mean, I've spoken to guys, multiple, loads of guys, loads of them who are actually living in tents by the by the canals in their respective city or towns or whatever. And it's like that shouldn't be happening in Britain in 2023 when you've got a military budget and spend a military budget spending of 76.8 billion in fact it's probably more now that's 2021's figures then i believe there should there, there shouldn't be anybody homeless in that country first and foremost because you're already spending 17 billion on jets why the hell is people living on the street surely you put people in homes first Oh, but then, then you'll get the virtue signalers. So we need virtue. We, we need um, we need defence. We need defence. The only people we need defence from is the people that are telling you you need defended, or the people that are drawing up these disgusting policies. I mean, the levels of psychopathy it must take to think that this is okay and have no emotional, empathetic comeback whatsoever to it absolutely baffles my mind, and that is why I'm here. Um, so, the next part of the statement is housing. Now, this is another problem that's caused, that's being caused. Smart people get a managed payment to the landlord in place, and they say, I want the payment paid directly. That is that is the smartest thing to do. However, a lot of the people that are doing that are still coming up short with rent. They're still getting letters to say they're in rent arrears. Now, I've, I've spoke to loads of those types of people as well. This was happening to quite a lot of people, but... What I'm about to talk here, talk about here, it was more about young men this was happening to. Now, on your statement, you've got your status of your house, and it's like you'll have your rent and how much that is, and if there's any other um, adults or non-dependents living at the property, they're expected to contribute to the rent because they duck, deduct it off. Um, I think it's, it's about 70 or £80 pound per adult, um, and then they have to make that up. Um, unfortunately, there's been a lot of the time where the house, the status of their house has been wrong. Now, what they did was, some years ago, they brung in what's known as local housing allowances. This, this was, this was all, I mean, when, they, this was all for the Hunger Games. No other reason to keep the rich and the poor apart. Anyway, they brought in this local housing allowance. So I'll briefly explain. If you move into a prop, uh, into a postcode, because every postcode's got its own cap for each, for one, two, three, and four bedroom houses and shared accommodation as well. So if, let's just say, for example, I, well, I was moving into somewhere that had a cap where the benefit would pay £100 per week. Now, if you move into a property in that, in that area that's, say, £120 a week, then you need to make up that extra £20, um, which, which is fine. Some people don't know that. Um, then they find out too late and they end up having to leave their property. Anyway, if you're in shared accommodation, there's not as much of an allowance for shared accommodation. I think it's two hundred. I think it's capped at two hundred and fifty pounds a month for most places. Um, so if your rent's five hundred a month, then you're two hundred and fifty a month short. Now the amount of people that were calling up and saying I can't understand why I'm in rent arrears, and when, before I knew this was happening, I. Couldn't work, couldn't, I couldn't work out what was going on until I asked someone one day, are you in shared accommodation? He said, no, I'm in a one-bedroom flat. Well, the problem was his, his rent was about 600 quid a month, but because he's, he's shared, it was on there that he was in shared accommodation, which is 250, there was a 350 pound shortfall every month. So every month he stayed in it, he was, he was, he was accumulating 350 pounds worth of arrears. And then I'd pointed it out to him, he said, but I've had it verified. So they've, somewhere along the line, it's been changed around. This system's got a lot to answer for. I mean, it's, 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 it's a stress farm. It's a stress, a worry, and a fear farm. Even from the point when you call up, it starts. It says it's the claimant's given the wrong information, their date of birth. I mean, every claimant knows their date of birth. And then it comes back and saying there's three failed attempts, failed security, and you need to hang up. There's a back door way to go in. But most, they don't even tell you that, I had to find that on my own. So, so people are calling up, giving the details, and because it's coming up saying failed security, they're, they're shutting it off. 
And until they get through to somebody like me that knows how to go in the back doorway and the stress and fear that that, the stress and anger, sorry, that that must cause, especially once you've had your money sanctioned for no reason, which I'll go into in a, in, in, in later in the video, um, or you've maybe had the wrong wages reported or something, or you've got carer's element on there that shouldn't be on there, whatever the case may be, and you say, no, I need to speak directly about this, and then that happens first and foremost, and someone hangs up on you, and then they'll maybe call up again, and it'll, ha and it'll happen again. It's all glitches in the system. And this, it, it brings me in mind of this, this Horizon scandal. Um, I'd seen, I'd spent New Year with my grandmother and she um, had, I'd watched the first episode with her and I'd said, that's, that's just like my job. When they were blatantly lying to people um, and withholding information and causing maximum stress. I mean, people killed themselves because of that. And yet they're worried about the post office reputation. Stuff the post office reputation. It's time we tain, tain this back. Um, and I, and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying this is the horizon because it's an accounting system, but it's the same thinking that's behind it. I mean, why would you put out a system like that and then tell people that it's working fine, it's only you it's happening to? It's, it's, I mean, people have died because of that and spent time in jail. And this, again, this is what... Well, I thought I was already decided I was going to do it, but when I'd seen Horizon, I thought, nah, this, this, this is very, very similar to that. Um, and it's, it's just... The computer said no. That that's basically what it's saying, and 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 then I had to explain to people why they were hanging up and saying, "Look, it's okay. There's a back door way to go in, so you can get to the security questions and get them into their bloody account." But that that's just one part of it. Now, why would they want to create a stress and fear farm? <laughs> I mean, because this benefit system generates it in abundance. Absolutely generates. I've spoken to people who are absolutely, I mean, absolutely, genuinely terrified from this benefit because constant repetition of being treated unfairly breaks down your mind and once your mind breaks down that's it you're 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 a, you're a, you're a puppet master's dream and that that's that's what's going on uh, here and this is why they're, they're they're employing the worst personalities or the worst or the people that lack compassion and empathy um, as work coaches, and I'll go into that as well, because some of the some of the vile personalities I've encountered, um, there's no words to describe them, and how they've ended up in that role, it just proves to me that these psychopaths need more psychopaths. That is exactly what they need, um, because good people good people wouldn't do that, um, and that's this. I mean, this is what's going on. Anyway, shared accommodation. Um, I, I do apologise for going off. It tends to happen when you're connecting dots. Um, so the shared accommodation, I'd informed them and I'd put it through to get it changed and he would have got his money back, yes. Um, but how many people, that's that's just for the people that, that get through to me. The vast majority of other people aren't doing that, they're not telling them. So, I mean, what is it? Is it is, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's there's corporations already taking over the councils and that's this isn't uh, 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 en route to the dystopian nightmare because that's what a technocracy is. It's, it's where... It's where um, Corporations run the government, and what else was COVID? It was corporations dictating to the government. That's that. That's where we're at with it. Um, so if 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 you are in rent arrears, the first thing you need to do is to check your statement to make sure you're getting the correct local housing allowance. Um, because if you're not, then that's the problem. Now the next part of the statement. This this is usually where you'll have your earnings. Now this is this is the RTI earnings system, earnings reporting system. This is another huge part of this, why this benefit system is failing and why it's stressing people out and starving people. RTI earnings, what it is, is it's, it's you, so if your employer will report your wages to the HMRC, the HMRC liaise with the DWP and Universal Credit and then your, uh, your, your statements, uh, your, or your payment rather, is calculated accordingly and it's calculated off the back of those earnings now the vast majority of people they um so so there's a system it depends on the status of your account so if you've got kids um and you're working what they do is they say the i think it's is it the first 269 or the first 369 i can't remember it's something like that of your earnings won't be taken into consideration so if it was just the 369 or whatever it is then their universal credit payment would remain the same however for every pound you take home after that it reduces it at 55 pence in every pound but that's fine for the, for the most part as long as things get reported correctly but so many people 
were getting earnings reported that they did not receive. And because of that, and, and that's that little the calculation I mentioned there, that's only for people that are LCWRA or they've got kids. For single men, they don't they don't they're not allowed that. It's just taken from their benefit system pound for pound. Well, fifty five pence in every pound. Um, and then eventually as soon as you cross the, the standard allowance, which is three hundred and sixty eight, then it's just renders it zero. So it's okay as long as you're getting the earnings, but if you're not getting earnings, <laughs> then they're, they're, they're going to take your payment off you. I had a guy in Christmas 22 and he got, it was the Friday, it was just about, well, everything was about to close up. And he had earnings reported and he says, look, my money's not here today. And I said, but you've had these earnings reported. He's like, look, man, I don't work. I haven't worked, I think it was about five years, he'd said. So I was like, oh my God, I had to put the payment dispute through, but he was rightly asking, where's my payment? I can't give you, I'm not, I'm not permitted to dispense any payments on here, we're not allowed to do that. Um, but just because the computer said that he received these earnings, then, and, and he can't get his payment, and yet, I had a work coach say to me, oh, well, well, um, how do you know it's not just a mistake, and, and, and they didn't get the earnings, it's like, well, the HMRC have countless times come back and say, this has nothing to do with us, we don't know where they're getting this accounting from. So these earnings, they're putting put in by someone, it's got human fingerprints all over it, and it's starving people. Now that guy, it was coming up to Christmas, Christmas, and I'm, I'm to tell him that, oh by the way, yes, the, the, we see the earnings have been reported, it's a mistake, we're very sorry, I'll put the payment dispute through, and here's the stickler, and I've got proof of this. Now, when this was happening, I was wondering, people were asking me, how long is this going to take? And at first I didn't know, I, and I genuinely didn't know, I said I don't know how, because once I pass it off, that's it. Until one day, I'd, I was looking through someone's journal, and I'd noticed a letter that had basically said that it was the returned money that they'd missed out on due to the earnings being reported incorrectly. Now, it was eight weeks, the, the, the date on the letter was exactly eight weeks from the point of when the payment dispute was received. And I'd actually thought to myself at the time, I thought, eight weeks, that's a long time. What are these people doing for eight bloody weeks? Um, but I thought, maybe that's just a one-off. Maybe it's just taking a little bit longer. Well, anyway, it turns out that it's not that as policy. Um, it's, it's eight weeks, no matter what. Um, and I'd seen this, and I took a screenshot of this. I've got this. I'll put it up on my Instagram or somewhere um, so that you can see it. Um, yes, payment uh, payment dispute accepted, blah, 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 HMRC, um, this process will take eight weeks, and in brackets, please do not share with the claimant. And that was it, I was so bloody angry when I seen that, do not share with the claimant, don't tell the claimant. So, you've reported wrong earnings through a dodgy system, as you're famous for them, because um, we've seen with Horizon that it, ha it has happened before, um, and because... That system is, is reported the wrong earnings. This person's not received their payment. The lady had kids. And she now has to wait eight bloody weeks for you to give her it back. Why is it taking eight weeks? And why am I not allowed to tell her that? This is the lies that are being told to people while you sit and watch Netflix or, or whatever. Or the amount of times that I've tried to tell this people this has been coming, they don't want to hear it. It's time we need to hear it because they're going to press ahead with it anyway. That situation I just described there, that is happening constantly. Absolutely constantly. It's not everywhere yet. It seemed to be central England, London, places like that was got it worse. And, 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 and there is places in Scotland where it's happening. But eventually what they'll do is they start it off small. And then they'll just keep introducing more and more and more. And if there's no opposition to it, it will be rolled out completely. And this is to just get pe people to acquiesce to it. Um, and the amount of people that phone up and say, oh, I didn't want to phone, I'm too scared to phone, I, I don't like confrontation, and well, guess what, that's their favourite target, because they know you're not going to do anything about it. Um, and this again, this is why I'm doing it, because, I mean, where do we go with this? If you can't report these people for fraud, what else is there to do but to do a video like this telling the nation about it? Um, and how it connects to the rest of the plan for the world, which is well underway, as we all know. So, this 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 is just information. It's and and I hope it does. I hope you get really angry with it because you should be. They know what they say. Uh, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off, um, and it absolutely should. So, 
I mean, like I say, the earnings disputes, this this has happened. I had a guy one day, he'd, he'd got 15, he said he earned 15,000 pounds and he hadn't worked for 10 years. And he was, he was genuine, he had, he had health conditions. Um, and, and and yet he was saying that he was owed 50, he made 15 grand. So wait, so who is it that's putting that information in there? Some, somebody has to. I mean, I don't, I'm not a computer expert. Maybe somebody can shed some light on how that might happen, especially when... Uh, HMRC come back and say this has nothing to do with us, we have not reported this information. Well, who has? I would like to know who has, and I'm sure you probably would as well. Um, and if it has happened to you, which the chances are, if you've, if you've, if you've clicked on this video, then it, it, it will have happened to you. Um, and I would absolutely block our phone lines up, and I would, and I, I, I would believe in journal messages. Um, that, that I, I would, I would be phoning up and demanding assistance, and demanding your rights, your rightful entitlement. Because the way things are, they're taking it from people. It's not enough that they've increased the cost of living to beyond the point that anyone can manage, certainly with kids. There's people in England and Scotland using the phrase, I heard this all the time, eat or heat. So it's either feed your kids or switch the heating on. I had a lady tell me one night that, um, or one day that Friday on the Friday night, because I told her about there was deductions coming off and I'd said, look, you've had deductions coming off um, that shouldn't have been coming off and I'll dispute it and I'll get it back. I don't know how long it'll take, but we'll get it back. And she thought, oh, that's, that's really, really good news. She said, I'll, I'll have a treat this Friday. I thought she was going to say she was maybe get an Indian meal or a Chinese or something. Do you know what she said to me? I'll be able to have a bit of toast. So people in 2023 are regarding a bit of toast on a Friday night as a treat. That absolutely broke my heart, it did, I couldn't believe it. And this woman, she was a carer, or she'd done something along the lines of that, and she absolutely fan, a fantastic person, and no complaints, she just got on with it. And, and this is the thing, the vast majority of people are good, and the, again, that's their favourite target, good people. Um, because good people, they think to themselves, well, I wouldn't do that, so how could they do that? But if we start thinking like that, we will lose the plot. Um, so, Ermin's... Any earnings that are being reported, be sure to check your statement seven days prior um, to get a jump on it, get a start on it, to get the disputes through. Um, and now, uh, that, this brings me... So the next part of it is, is would be like, there'd be like maternity allowance on there. Um, maternity allowance, this, this, is, this one will blow your mind as well. So, a lady got through to me one day and she, she'd been dropping her hours to go on to maternity. Um, I think maternity, I think it's about £110 a week or something like that, right round about there, which four or five hundred a month. Um, and she had, she'd only just gone on to it, and she'd gotten through and she'd look, there's something going on with my payment here, it's it's dropped quite considerably, and it, she said, it's not just 50 or £60, and it, it wasn't, it was £600. And she again, she had kids already. And I had looked, and I looked through the statement, I looked through the account, and I thought, this is wrong here, they've capped, the benefit capped her here. Um, and they shouldn't have. So I put the payment dispute through and I said, look, she's been benefit cap, she shouldn't have, she's gone on to maternity. The same way they got through to me 24 hours later and she said, hi Alan, through to DWP, blah, blah, blah. Well, Alan, I spoke to you yesterday. Yes, yeah, she did. And she said, the case managers came back to me and said that this is right. And I said, well, it's not right. It can't be right. It's It just can't be right. So I put the, I put the payment dispute through again and I put a message to say, look, this is wrong because she's, she's on maternity. Well, the amount of people I'd spoken to after that going on to maternity and working less hours that had been capped five and six hundred benefit cap is absolutely, again, staggering. Now, I had a conversation with a lady one day about it and we had agreed that it was something akin to what you would have seen in Nazi Germany had it have come to fruition. Um, yeah, it's okay, as long as you're out doing 40 hours a week, 45 hours a week, that's absolutely fine. You'll get your wages and you'll get your payments, blah, 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 blah. Everything will be great. You drop below that to go and have another baby. We are sanctioning you 600 quid a year month, even though it's just a benefit cap, but how's it any different to being sanctioned? And that is, that is policy. If you're not working enough, they'll sanction you, take 600 pounds off you. It's just, so someone, how they think it's a good idea to start taking some, that kind of money from someone who's already got children and about to have another, absolutely boggles the mind. It boggles the mind. But again, psychopaths don't think. They're not humane people, are they? So um, it's important to remember that. And that's why they need to employ more psychopaths, case managers. And they're not all like that, but the vast majority of them don't care. Um, no compassion, no empathy. Um, and Because they'll sleep fine at night whilst pushing these policies through. And that, that's, that's, that, that's the truth. That is the absolute truth. 
Um, so that's another side of it that absolutely needs to be done away with. And then you've got like um, when people are on self-employment and stuff like that. I forget what that's called. After one year, they, they allow you a grace period for one year. Um, and then after one year of self-employment, they then expect you to be earning 1,400 profit a month. Even if you're not earning it, they won't give you your money. They're saying, well, you've had a year of self-employment, that's it. It's just, it's absolutely despicable, it really is. And then the next part of the statement, it, this comes on to where the deductions are. Now, these deductions could be anything from benefit recoveries of any kind, whatever benefit you've been on, rent arrears, court fines, water arrears, Anything, anything like that that, that that can be taken from your benefit is the next. This is the next section. Now, the problem with that is as well that some people are having child tax credit benefits, saying you've been overpaid child tax credits, and they're not just taking five or ten pounds. So for the most part, it's be anything between fifty and one hundred and fifty pounds. And and I'd, a guy said to me one day, "Well, I've not got any children." It's like, well, how can you be on child tax credits? He says, "I've never been on it." So how could you've been overpaid the benefit? But this pure this statement says you have. So this is why we need to take, like I say, between fifty and one hundred and fifty pounds they're taking from people for no reason. I said they have to send you a letter to say, look, you've been overpaid this benefit this amount during this time period, and we now need to take this back at an amount that you can afford, and then you agree with whatever, whatever you can afford. They don't just say, all right, well, you, you, you've been overpaid, so we're slapping this. And I, I, the amount of times I'd seen any, 100, 110, 150 was unbelievable. It was absolutely unbelievable. And they are, they, they are they're striking people to the point of desperation now. I mean, it's not the cost of living is doing it on its own, almost. But then to take people's benefits, to steal from people who have not got anything to steal, is just, it's that... There is, it's psychopathic is the only thing for it. Because human beings would never be able to do stuff like that. And if you are a case manager and a work coach and you're doing absolutely every single thing they tell you with regards to these policies, then you need to go and have a word with yourself because how you're sleeping at night is completely beyond my my comprehension. I, I, I don't understand it. And I mean, some of the work coaches, like I said before, the vile personalities, I'll just quickly touch on a quick story here. There was a... Um, a lady who had a very, very serious, serious spinal injury. And what she did was, um, she, every status has got an account, every account has got a particular status. So depending on how often you need to attend the job centre, and it's dependent on health conditions. Now, this lady couldn't walk, and it would have been fine if she'd had an assistant with her, but she didn't on this day, and she couldn't come to the job centre. So I'd messaged her coach, I said, look, she can't come to the job centre, she's got this wrong with her. It's fine, well, she knew. But she didn't care. I said, she got this wrong with her and she's got no one to assist her. She can't walk. Now, she was she was probably going to get into trouble for it. And eventually I said, look, this, this something needs to be done here. And she'd come back to me quite nastily and said, oh, um, have, you got, have you got a minute so that we can have a little video call? Um, because I've just had to work through my break because of that. And I had sent something back. I said, absolutely, I have. I said, because this is all wrong. And I started explaining. I said, you not think it's just a little bit funny that you've got someone coming in um, with a serious spinal injury who can't walk without assistance and you're not going to do anything to help her. I said, you, you don't see anything wrong with that. That lady, this was way back, this was a year ago, just, just coming on a year ago last February. That lady, as of the 31st of October, the day that I had left, she didn't get back in contact with me. She was a coward. And I hope she listens to this because she'll know exactly who she is. Yes, yeah, that's right, you're a coward and you shouldn't be doing that job. I do apologise, let's move on. So, um... Again, benefit recoveries, I was on there, yes. Yeah, so if you've got anything like that, I mean, and this, this is another part of it as well. A lot of people have got benefit recoveries and they have got maybe water arrears or electricity arrears or whatever the case may be. And it's on their statement and think, oh, that's okay because I'm actually in these arrears. But what I was finding out was is that people had been calling up these companies or getting letters from the companies to say, look, you're not paying off your arrears. And then they would say, well, it's on my statement that I am. They would get through to you and you would explain it saying here on your statement. But then you would have to get them to confirm that the company's not receiving the money. So even though that, state, that, that deduction may be on there, you need to phone the company to make sure they're actually receiving it and how much they're receiving. Because if they're not, again, it's another payment dispute. And that's, that's court fines as well. They do it with court fines. As, although the court fines, they did seem to be correct a lot of the time. Um, but there is there was fines on there that people weren't aware of, didn't know what it was. And they'd called their court and the court says, you've not got any fines, we've not received any money, etc., etc. And that's, that's, again, this is happening every single day in life to... 
I mean, like I say, I would take 300, 350 calls a week, more. And a big percentage of them was to do with these issues that I'm speaking of. And there's anything between three and 500 agents online. So you do the numbers, you run the numbers on that. That's how many people are going without, they're being pushed into hardship because of this. And, and, and it's just, it has to stop. We need to do something. It doesn't matter what we think of each other. Well, I mean, some people I wouldn't want to spend an evening with and some I would, but we still, again, we need to put our differences aside to say, look, we need to work together for the sake of the next generation, our children, um, at least, and so people can at least eat, have the luxury of being able to eat, because the way things are just now, they're not being able to do that. And there's a lot of people, good people who are, and they've said this to me as well, that as long as my kids are not going hungry, I'm fine. I spoke to a lady one day, dropped down about two or three dress sizes, she said to and she, she inspired me, she was a lovely lady to speak to, and she this was a perfect example of turning a negative into a positive. Um, she couldn't afford to eat, so instead of feeling sorry for herself or being victimised or, or, or in victimhood, what she did was she seen the positive side of it, and she said, well, actually, um, she started fasting. I um, mean, fasting, I've, I mean, I've done it, I'll, I'll go into it in the video when I do it, how I've done it, but... It absolutely changes your life, it changes the way you think, it changes the way you look at things, and when the, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this lady, um, she had dropped her dress sizes, and not only that, she'd actually, she'd started volunteering in places like care homes for free, just to fill in her time, because the fasting was such a benefit to her. Um, and, then, and, and she's inspired me, and I can't even remember her name, but I hope, if she sees this high, and I hope you're doing really well, because... I mean, you did brighten my day up that day when you told me that, and it, it, it was amazing, like, and just to hear someone spin a negative into a positive, so, it's all mindset, Depend, depends the way you look at things, um, but this, this, this again, and then you've got other people who are go, have to go for, they'll maybe only have one, they'll wash their hair once a week, that was constantly hearing people say that, oh, I wash my hair once a week now, and the rest of the week, they're going for cold showers, Cold showers are, a, are of a benefit as well. Um, there's no doubt about that. But this, these are just some of the measures that people are taking in this country. Well, it's 2024 now. I do apologise. Um, I said 2.23 before, but it's 2.24 now. And they're, 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 these are the kinds of issues we're talking about. We're being pushed back into Victorian times. Like in Victorian times, uh, they, they would maybe they would go out and work in some factory for 12 hours. Um, they'd be absolutely knackered when they came in at night. They would maybe have enough to put food on the table and put some coal on the fire. Um, and then they would go to sleep and they would get up and do it all over again. And that is why a lot of the people during that period looked the way they did because it was just absolutely just soul destroying, we'll call it what it was. And this is, they're moving us back into that world. I call it the Archon world, as many other people do as well. Um, and this, they're absolutely taking us back there. I mean, when people are sleeping in tents by canals, that's wrong. I mean, even Scotland up here, I don't think a lot of Nicola Sturgeon, and she has parroted this universal income many times. She's not there anymore, but um, she, she she's absolutely at the forefront of this as well. And there's, there's Sorry, I lost my train of thought there, what I was going to say there. Um, but yeah, there is people going hungry in Britain and sleeping in tents, and it's, it's, it's all because of this. It's The Hunger Games are not coming. They're here. They're absolutely here. This is not a, a conspiracy theory. Ask people, what does that mean? Do you know what that means? Do you know what it came from? 99 out of 100 of them don't. And it's like you're using a term that was parroted or coined by the bloody CIA. So, well done you. Um, but it's, this is not a theory. This is fact. This is happening. It's actually happening. And, and there's people out there, I mean, I've spoken to pensioners. And I'll just touch on this quickly. It's actually happened to my own grandmother. I mean, I, I had... I had a, a pensioner say to me one day that she was hungry, but she didn't want to burden her family with it. And I said, look, I would be, I, I would have a burden on me if I'd found out that you didn't tell us if you were my family member. Um, so she went and told her, she would have went and told them. But my gran, my papa, unfortunately died in a April the 23rd last year. And um, my gran had gotten her last state pension payment on the 17th. And she, um, my uncle Jason over the festive had, checked basically um, on our statement and realised that those payments hadn't been paid since the 17th of, of, of April last year. Now, my grandfather dies, they were married for 50 some years um, and they automatically stopped paying her benefit. And it's lucky she 
she's wise with her money and she puts a little bit away and she didn't really notice it because she doesn't deal with those kinds of things. But they still took her money off her and that's, that's, that's what they But how many people out there that haven't got a little bit put away that, 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 that are having this done to them? I had another uncle who was waiting on a payment from the job centre and he didn't get it for no good reason. People are logging in and they're having their claims suspended for no good reason. We believe you're not entitled to claim universal credit. There's illegitimacies in your claim. Closed down, suspended, no payments until you do what they say. And if you think I'm joking here, please don't. They've actually had people doing the wheelie bin selfies, I call them. People standing up in bloody wheelie bins, taking selfies of their street to show they're in Britain. The first guy that told me that, I said, you're, you're, somebody's joking with you, mate. Oh no, it's definitely them. And then in their droves, I've got loads of them. And it's, it's true, they, they absolutely are doing that to people, making people stand up in wheelie bins to take a selfie. To, and, then, and then they'll say, right, even, I mean that, if they say you're not in Britain, right, and then you take a wheelie bin selfie to say that you're, that you're in Britain, why do they need more information? Why can they say, all right, we're sorry about that, there's your money. That's not what they're doing though. They're, they're, and then they'll say, all right, you need to do this and you need to do that. I can't remember some of the measures, but some of them were absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, and, and, and with regards to decision makers as well, how they sleep at night is, is beyond me also. So um, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Um, I don't want to obviously make them too long. I am, I've, got, I've got loads of bullet points. There's still lots of content to cover. Um, I will be doing a lot more videos with regards to ch how to change your mind on things and how to obviously boost your health. You need to lose any weight or anything. Um, I've got the perfect method for it and it's worked for everyone that I've given it to. So uh, just look out for those videos. I will be posting them daily. If you have watched this video, thank you very much. Um, if you do know anyone who's having, who's been affected by any of the issues that's been mentioned here, um, at least you can show them this video. Um, and you'll get me in the comments section. I'm also on Instagram as well. I'll be more than happy to give you advice should you need it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you the next time.